Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. It's great to welcome everybody back, and today our special guest is Manny Pacheco of Forgotten Hollywood fame. Manny, great to see you again. My pleasure, as always. Good to see you guys. You're looking very colorful there, John. Thank you very much. Uh, I think that's my Irish skin, but it could be a tan. I don't, I'm not sure what it is I was, today. I was referring to the shirt. <laughs> oh, well, I, I don't think you can tell my shirt from my face. But Hey, Manny, um, your books, Forgotten Hollywood, are wonderful uh, because they, they go back and they, they profile, among other things, they profile a lot of uh, the great character actors of the past. And I love those old movies. I love the, the, the character actors who, who really played, they were the supporting cast. And they, most of these character actors, you'd see them in every other film, but most of them were not particularly pretty. I think of uh, Zazu Pitts as an example. Um, she was an outrageous character. Um, uh, we talked about Frank McHugh in another uh, uh, video, and he was he was that heavy set kind of guy. He could be, you know, a lot of uh, very funny, um, but I don't think the character actors of today are they don't fit the the natural mold. They're 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 sometimes attractive actors who just happen to be playing in a supporting role, and maybe they. They have an interesting character to play, but there's not, to me, there's not the same kind of, um, what do you call it, uh, cast of real char natural characters that they used to have in the 30s and 40s and even the 50s. Well, the, you know, let me just start by saying back in the 30s, 40s and 50s, you did have supporting players that were quite gorgeous or beautiful or, or pretty or, or good looking. I mean, all I have to do is name people like Lucille Ball, who was a, really a supporting player at MGM, and Gig Young, who was a really good looking guy who just never seemed to get the girl. So there were those actors that existed even then. But today, if you're talking about the people that might look like Lionel Barrymore, Frank Morgan, Peter Lorre, or John Carradine, you, you might be right. <laughs> However, yeah. we have some wonderful character actors today that probably could have worked 60 years ago, 70 years ago, uh, who would fit who would fit the bill in my estimation. I mean, you can't go wrong with the great uh, Paul Giamatti. I mean, he is just just a terrific actor. He was given the chance to play lead in, in the movie Sideways, but he uh, decided that he was better suited to settle back into character roles. And that's probably a great decision on his part, since he's nobody's uh, idea of a, a good looking guy. But uh, but I mean, he's a great example of, of what you're talking about. And there's others, I think, are well, yeah, uh, right from us, uh, uh, probably one of the, the most memorable ones for me. And of course, a great character actor, just no matter how well you might recognize that, you know who that person is, even if you don't know the name. They yeah, melt into the John, background. John, right. uh, Riley. John yeah. C. Riley was great in Chicago, right. and and he he's done um, just an, I mean he was also in Boogie Nights, and he was really good yeah. in that. Again, a supporting player. He had a chance to star in in the movie Stan and Ollie, where he plays Oliver mm -hmm. Hardy. But again, I think he's more comfortable in the backgrounds in support of other actors. You can't, you cannot uh, dismiss his talent. Of course, I, my my fallback guy too is J.K. Simmons. Mm. I mean, winning yes. an Academy Award for Whiplash, he was great in Juno. Uh, yeah. He was also um, in so many other films. He was in La La Land, as a matter of fact, and he was also in a, a movie with Tom Hanks that was uh, create the Lady Killers, which is a was a remake of a, of a film back in the 1950s with Alec Guinness. But J.K. Simmons. Was one is one of the great character actors I think of our generation, and of course, I would be remiss if I ignored uh, the late Philip Seymour Hoffman. Mm. I don't think yeah. there's any better character actor alive when he was alive. I okay. think he was, he was at the top of the list. Okay, I stand corrected. <laughs> <laughs> but you, but you, you, you get my point, and that oh, is, sir. I guess, that I love the the character actors of the past. Oh yeah, and, and there's so many, and there's so many good ones. I feature yeah. uh, 56 in my three mm -hmm. books: a Forgotten Hollywood, Forgotten History. Really? Something. 
Forgotten Hollywood, Forgotten History, and Road to Forgotten there Hollywood. There were dozens Forgotten of History. them. There yes. were dozens of them in gangster movies. Okay, they absolutely. Were, they were, yeah, they were. They looked like a bad guy. Okay, both of them probably <laughs> very sweet, but they looked like a bad guy, and they just got used over and over and over again. And you recognize them, especially when you think that when yeah. they get these mobsters to play the role. <laughs> yeah, especially at Warner Brothers. I mean, they had their slew: Warren Heimer and uh, Lyle Talbot. And yes. Even Humphrey, you know, Humphrey Bogart in the 1930s was a supporting player. He he never got top billing until 1940 in, in 1941 right. with I Sierra, and then following up with the Maltese Falcon. But before that, he was a supporting gangster. Imagine if he hadn't had the 1940s career, we'd be talking about Humphrey Bogart the way we talk about, uh, you know, uh, Edward Brophy. And, and who remembers Edward Brophy? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But instead, he's one of the iconic stars of Hollywood because he was elevated by John Houston. So yeah. you're, you're absolutely right. There's another actor that, that was very fortunate to become elevated as a, an A-list star, but started as a character actor, and that's Van Heflin. Van Heflin uh, was in support of uh, uh, Ro Robert Taylor uh, in, in, a, in a movie and won himself an Academy Award. And then after that, he became the star of movies like uh, the, the Strange Loves of Martha Ivers and yeah. uh, um, also um, uh, Shane and uh, 310 to Yuma. I mean, he, yeah. he all of a sudden became a major star. And uh, but he still, you know, I, I still think of him as, as, as a, a character actor because, again, he didn't have that rugged, good looking frame. I mean, he was kind of a Spencer Tracy uh, uh, kind of a middle age build. Now, but, you know, he managed to make a slew of films. And as in, as my book points out, um, he is also tied to the Kennedy assassination. Did, uh, by the way, wow, did any, have to read up on that did any of these, uh, yeah. any of these uh, character actors, I'm not talking about elevated to a supporting actor role. Did any of them get nominated or win uh, Oscars as a character actor? Did that ever happen or that just never came? Yes. Out? Well, they didn't create this, the Best Supporting Player uh, Award until 1936. Mm. Now, that's that's about nine years after the Academy Awards started getting handed out. Uh, they needed to do that because of one actor in particular, because they just couldn't nominate him for, for a lead actor role. And so he was getting ignored. Uh, and that was Walter Brennan. Walter yeah. Brennan was so good at what he did. That yeah. he was able to win three of the first five best supporting actor parts. Before that, it was very rare that a supporting player or a character actor would actually win the best actor award, although it was done twice. The very first award going to Emil Jannings, who was uh, would be better remembered, except that he became a Nazi sympathizer in the 1940s and is all but forgotten today. And the other is way more familiar, and that's uh, Lionel Barrymore. He actually really? won an Academy Award. Yeah, and he yeah. was a supporting player to Norma Shearer and still uh, for the divorcee, and, and he still won himself an Academy Award. Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, it's to his credit. He, 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 he's very good. Now, I have a funny story to tell about that. When I wrote my first book, I was getting all sorts of wonderful uh, critiques, and, and I was winning a number of awards for Forgotten Hollywood. But there was this one person who decided that they were going to write that I was really wasting my time, and that, why did anybody care about supporting players, and why am I not writing enough about female supporting players? I mean, they, the list went on and on and on, and I was just getting, I was just getting raked over the coals. But she did say one thing later on, deep in the critique, and she said, there is one actor that stood out for me, and he would have been, Manny, that is he, that's me, he would have been better served if he had devoted the entire book to this actor, and that actor was Lionel Barrymore. And because of that critique, along with a, a suggestion by, of all people, my mother, uh, I decided that I was going to put a, 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 a profile on Lionel Barrymore in documentary production, and I've been working on that ever since. So because of a really terrible critique and because of my <laughs> mom, I actually um, I'm actually in production for a documentary telling Lionel Barrymore's story. Mm. Well, I'm glad you listened to yes. your mother. That's well, I'm all glad I listen to people who do, don't like me very but much. Too. Speaking <laughs> of listening to people who do like you very much, uh, we've just gone on for, uh, I don't know, five, ten minutes talking about character actors as opposed to character actors who are also female. 
and there are tons of really right, good well, ones today. Uh, but were there any back in the silent era that were constantly well, used, John, like a Martha Ray? Now that's not the silent era, but uh, uh, people like that that were that were in lots of different things before they became stars themselves. Yeah, John. John alluded to Zazu Pitts. That's a great example of a, of a great character actress of the 1930s. Uh, Gail Sondergaard. I mean, I don't think it gets any better than Gail Sondergaard. She was in consideration to become the Wicked Witch in The Wizard of Oz, and they only didn't give her the role because they found her to be too pretty, and so they gave it to Margaret Hamilton. And now everybody remembers Margaret Hamilton, and very few remember Gail Sondergaard. She won an Academy Award. In 1936, Best Supporting Actress. In fact, I think I believe she received the first Best Supporting Actress Academy Award, and she might be better remembered, except for the fact that she was blacklisted. House on American Activities Committee um, labeled her a communist, and then after uh, let's say 1950, she never really worked again, and that's really a shame because she should be remembered. The great Jane Darwell, uh, she was a, a, a staple at Fox always playing in support of Henry Fonda. She was the mother of Tom Joad, Henry Fonda's part, in oh, yeah. Rapes yeah. of Wrath. She was a memorable villain in the, in the Oxbow incident. And she was the voice of mothers back home in all of the John Ford documentaries that showcased the soldiers fighting the battle during World War II. He would kind of allude to what mothers were praying for and what they were thinking as their sons were back in war, and she would be the voice that was used by John Ford. So um, there's Dame Judith Anderson, who's always a really great villain. She was Mrs. Danvers in, uh, in an Alfred Hitchcock production, Rebecca. And uh, she was also in Laura. She always played these sinister roles. And I had the pleasure of actually meeting uh, Dame Anderson um, when she worked on a soap opera shortly before her death. I was doing some voiceover work for San Santa Barbara, and she appeared in Santa Barbara, and I had a chance to meet her, and she was just delightful. So this is towards the end of her career, but she was just a joy, and um, gosh, I would have loved to talk to her about her great career. Many, many great uh, character actresses, or as we like to say, character actors who happen to be female. So yeah, there's there's a lot, absolutely. Well, uh, this has been great because I consider us to be three great characters. <laughs> well, I couldn't disagree with you on that one, Art. <laughs> so thank you again, Maddie, for an amazing walk down memory lane. And uh, I have to tell you that who but Manny Pacheco would know who these people were off the top of his head? Uh, well, I, I've written about them, and, and they're chapters in my books. And, and if you'd like to know more, I invite uh, our, our audience to uh, pick up some copies of, of the Forgotten Hollywood book series. They're available on Amazon, and it's always a pleasure for me to remember those individuals who appeared below the titles of films. Yes, yeah. Well, Manny, thank you so much, because it's great recalling not only the names, character names of the past, but those of today. Right. I agree. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.